So it's finally time to leave the modeling things behind and have a look at other things. And we start off with lighting and have a look, first of all, a bit about the physics of light to understand how light works in the real life so we can then use it appropriately in our 3D application. So yeah, let's start with some physics and some terms in the beginning. So um, when we have a look at this uh, little illustration here, we have a light source on the left side and we illustrate the direction of light with arrows. And also we simplify light in a way that we speak about light rays and not about light waves. So when we have an object here on the right side and we have a light source on the left side and the light source shines some light onto this object. The first thing we shall notice is that over distance the light intensity will decrease and this is mostly because of uh, atmospheric particles which are in the air which absorb the light and so over distance the light intensity will diminish. Now when light hits a surface it will be reflected and the amount of reflection depends on the kind of material this object is so if you would imagine a mirror then almost like 100 percent of the light will be reflected but also if we have other objects like diffuse or glossy objects um, a lot of light is actually reflected and depending on the material a certain amount of light rays will be absorbed and the light rays which will be thrown back then will determine basically what kind of color we um, as what kind of color we can see this kind of object. There are also type of objects where the light actually goes into the object into the material itself. Um, in most cases this light will be then uh, broken a little bit it will be refracted in a certain direction so if you for example imagine something like a glass material um, the light will go through but it will be refracted in some way so when the angle of the light changes a little bit we call this refraction and of course everywhere where there's light and there's an object we also have some shadowing so the shadow is basically the area where no light is if we have a closer look at the light intensity fall off, um, we have to understand that light decreases exponentially by dis distance. So this means when we double the distance to our light source, we only get a quarter of the light intensity at the referred object. So you, we can also refer to this as the inverse squall square law and as you can see in this illustration so this would be the formula so over a given distance if you double the distance the light intensity um, will only be a quarter of that and that's quite important to keep in mind when you position light in your scenes that the closer your object is uh, to the light source the brighter or the more intense the light will be and if you move your light source farther away from your object the less of light you will get into your object and we will uh, also see all of this in Cinema 4D in a second. So this is just the um, other representation of the same thing so if we have a given light intensity of like 100% and then we double the distance from an object to that light source you can see with every um, doubling of the distance the intensity will be decreased by uh, like four times. All right, um, why is that? If we have a look on a simplified version of a light and we understand light in form of light rays, we can measure the light intensity by having a look at the distance of every kind of light point here on our checkpoints. So if we have an object which is pretty close to the light source, the light rays which will hit the light source will be close together and thus the intensity will be uh, high. If we move further away from the light source you can see that due to the spread of the light rays the distance between different points gets larger and thus the intensity will decrease. So this 
also explains this kind of in square um, inverse square law of light. Then there's also another behavior which is quite important and that it's the the intensity um, independence to the angle of which the light is shining to your object. So if we have a light source and the light hits the surface perpendicular and we're still defining the intensity of light as the distance of one light ray to each other, you can see in this example those distance or this distance of two points is about one unit um, away. So when light shines perpendicular to the surface, it will be more intense than it will be when it's angled. And that is because if the light hits our surface in an angled way, the light rays will, or the distance between the different light rays will be higher and thus the intensity of the light source will be lower. So also this is important for placement of lights in your scene. If you place your light source straight to your object in a perpendicular way, then it will get more light than as if the light source is angled in some way to your object. Now let's have a look, uh, a look about uh, or into shadows. And there are like two things we have to keep in mind when we um, want to understand shadows. So the first thing is shadow size. And there's a simple rule that is if the light source is closer to your object, the shadow will be bigger. And, and those are just simple geometric kind of things. As you can see, the light source is closer, the angle will be um, wider. And so thus the shadow of this kind of um, shadow, the, the shadow size will be bigger. And if we move the light source further away from our object, you can see the angle will change and the, the shadow will be smaller, actually. The second thing about shadows is the appearance of the shadow itself. And we have basically two th types of shadows. We have hard shadows where the edge of the shadow is very hard and pronounced. And we have light shadows or soft shadows where the, the edge of the shadows is more soft and we cannot make out the exact shape of the shadow. Hard shadows you get mostly when you have like point light, which is, for example, very small or very far away. So you could imagine the sunlight at midday and you already uh, experience this in, in real life that the shadows get really hard. While in evening times so or if you have like a bigger light source or the light source is closer to your object, the shadows will get fuzzy and more diffuse. We actually don't have to set all those things up inside of Cinema 4D, at least when we are using uh, the Corona Renderer engine. Uh, and all of this is taken care for by the render engine. But it's good to know this kind of things so that we control, can control all of the aspects um, accordingly. So here's a quick sum up. So hard shadows, it um, exists when the light comes from a small concentrated light source, like a light bulb or even the sun. Um, the sun is nothing else as a very small, but very, very bright light source. Um, if you have a space scene, there will be no atmospheric scattering whatsoever. So it's again like the sunlight, but it's even more pronounced the hard shadows because, because the light will not be scattered by the atmosphere at all. And of course, you can, for artistic reasons, choose to do hard shadows and set up hard shadows to get a more like stylized comic look, for example. Soft shadows, on the other hand, are, comes from light sources which have like a flat surface or a diffuser in front of a light source, like, you know, from a photo studio, for example. Um, also, clouds are something like a diffuser. So if light shines through clouds on a cloudy day, the shadows will also be much more diffuse. Um, then we also get softer shadows if light comes from different light sources. So if you don't have just one light source, but many light sources. And also if you have light bouncing in a room, then you also have scattered light and thus the existing shadow um, will be more diffuse. Here's a real life example. That's my hand. And you see a picture on the left side. This is taken 
at night with a light bulb. The only light source in this room was a light bulb. And you can see I have a, the, the shadow of my hand is very hard and precise. The image on the right side is taken at daylight and it's only the indirect light coming from the outside through the window. And as you can see, the shadow is of my hand is almost not recognizable and very, very soft. So this just as a real life example. Now we'll have a test now in, in Cinema 4D, but before we can do this, we have to quickly cover the different light types and we'll do this in another video.